This is the handbag husband. The handbag husband. Yay! We are at the end of our trip here through Asia, doing our amazcapades. You got tanner. No, oh, dude, I'm also dark already. Uh, and I think... Again, maybe like 10,000. Oh. <laughs> so we want to talk about what is a little bit of the difference in the experience that we've had from the United States, where we've done a fair amount of Hermes uh, kind of boutiquing, uh, uh, Europe, where we've done considerably more and then also now in Asia specifically in uh, Bangkok and Hong Kong so we're gonna talk about kind of the differences and the way that they do things here things that we found surprising and whether or not we think it's actually worth stopping by if you happen to be in the neighborhood uh, here in Asia to do some Hermes capes now of course before we get to all that if you like the Hermes content if you like the Hermes milieu if you like the Hermes capades international uh, <laughs> <laughs> so tired. Please don't forget to like and subscribe because it does really help the channel grow and of course we are so so thankful for that. Thank you. But also because it means you get notifications when our new long videos come out, our short videos come out, and all the stuff we got on the socials at the handbag husband. We got new immense content coming out every single week. Alright, let's talk about a little bit of those differences between the US, Europe, and Asia. So on this trip specifically, we have gone to how many stores are total? So let's start counting. So, so we're not going to count the airport ones though. Are we counting the airport ones? Let's, I don't know. Let's count the airport. We'll just do sure. it Carmel. Because, so, because Hong Kong just flew on us. Uh, yeah. We're supposed to be three yeah. instead of two. So I'm like, okay, let's go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so we had LAX, right? We had... Um, Icon Siam. Icon Siam in Bangkok. Siam Paragon. Siam Paragon, the in, second one in Bangkok. Then we Bangkok, had the Bangkok International, in, yeah. right? Yes. Then we had a uh, landmark prints here in Hong Kong. Uh, the the flagship, yeah. The flagship. And then finally our last one, which is the Hermes Boutique here in the Hong Kong uh, airport. airport. Yes. Okay, so we made a pretty big round uh, of it here in you know Southeast Asia and, and Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. um, again, we were supposed to get to more, but in Hong Kong, like four or three, but we only made it to one with good reason, <laughs> primarily because we got a non quota bag as well as a quota bag in our first visit. And the visit was four hours and sucked up basically all of our boutique time. So we'll, we'll get to that story in another video. But what we want to cover here is kind of what is different? Why, why is it different? How do they do things different here? And I don't know, just kind of overall general impressions. How do you feel like Asia does things different than maybe the U.S. as far as it has boutiques? Uh, I don't know. Uh, more bad candies, I guess. Out, out, out and about. Maybe because I don't really leave the house. Like for bag spotting you're talking about. Yeah. So like again, people carrying Hermes yeah. bags around. But then again, maybe because I'm not leaving the house when I'm home. Yeah, I mean, you're you're a lot of a homebody. Uh, and I think that's fair. I, I would say that we don't see a lot of quota bags. We see some non-quota bags. We don't see a ton of quota bags out and about unless you're in a specific place where sure. people are rocking them. Like sure. South Coast Mall or, you know, at a Four Seasons or some fancy event. Right, but just like kind of run of the mill day to day stuff, you don't really see that. Sure. I think that um, one thing that we notice here in Asia is just kind of personality wise, as far as style goes, we, we talked about a little bit before where things are literally just more is more, right? Like they just they wear a full. I think that's one in Bangkok. I actually, especially in Bangkok, I actually yeah. I thought Hong Kong would be like that and more, yeah. but actually, no. There's a little more subdued. Yeah. There's a little more subdued. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Bangkok is more is more, right? So they just have everything. They, the watches, the, the outfit, everything just looks perfect. And they just, when it's when it's all done, they add a little bit more on top of it, right? Yeah. And that's just stylistically. I think that the boutiques that we visited in Bangkok really gave us the idea that although they don't have a local, non-local policy. But I feel like the system is very much like in the U.S., I think. In some ways. Know. Yeah, in some ways, but they don't have the non-local local policy. They, they didn't tell us to go back to our home store sure. to attempt to uh, go there, which we get a lot at a lot of times in a lot of the spaces we go to. They say, oh, just go ho go to your home store and work it out, which, you know, as you all see, <laughs> it's, a, it's a work in progress. So I think that, you know, 
Yeah, I think I think that one of the way, one of the ways that is different is that they are really going to be relationship based. So maybe that's a similarity, but they don't have like a non-local local yeah. distinction, right? They're just like, look, if you come in, you spend some Thai bot and you develop a relationship, then there is an opportunity to get quarterback specifically in the Siam Paragon uh, boutique. Yes. Um, but and I think when we rated it, we rated the Siam Paragons higher than the Icon Siam. Yeah, like it's less yes attractive. It's less good looking. It's less new, but I feel like a lot of the bags that are coming into Bangkok, yeah. if you're getting bags in Bangkok, it's more than yeah, likely going to be in Siam. I, yeah. I can guarantee yeah. you that. We, yes. did, we, we, we yes. don't know when, but yes. you will yes. get a bag. So yeah. the SA also wheeling apparently had, was wheeling a deal, right? She had some juice, right? And so that is a different experience than when the SA is just like, well, I don't know, we just don't have any bags, so I hope you have a good day, right? Yeah. Not just a great day. So, um, yeah, so the, the uh, that's interesting with Bangkok, but I think it would require a lot of time and energy and bot uh, mm. to do it, which is not that different from other places, but yeah. just just that relationship thing they focused on. For sure. So that's the other thing. The other side of it was that um, in Bangkok, specifically when we were doing bags bagging, we saw a lot of quarterback, mini quarterbacks, right? So Kelly Brick and Constance's, we saw a fair amount of those like just Ke- walking Kelly around. Kelly and mm-hmm. what else? I think it's because at the four season, the, the hotel that we stay, yeah. there are always events going on, like yeah, weddings, so whatever. There's like so, black so, tie events and stuff. So people bust out their small bags, which makes yeah. sense like, yeah. for like a night event. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it makes sense. And they also mentioned that the things that are that are popular here in Asia are obviously smaller bags. The, in Bangkok, more the minis, yes. as well as Epsom leather, and folks are not into uh, Boxer, Berenia. Uh, 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 yeah, Berenia or Swift leather, those kinds of things. No, they want Swift. Wait, they want they want Epsom, but they don't want any box. That's right. They don't want box. That's right. They want they don't want box, but they want Epsom. Yeah. Which is you know, a bit of an anathema to us, but you know whatever the preference is, that's totally fine. So. I think overall, the big difference between the U.S. and Bangkok is the stylistic ways that people interact with their masks. Like they just wear everything all maxed out to the max. Yeah. Um, the SA say that they will need a relationship to develop, but they are like, if you develop a relationship, we'll get you a bag. N- no questions asked, right? Yeah. It's just a matter of time, essentially. Yeah. And then um, that they don't have a preference for locals or non-locals. They're cool with long-distance relationships and all that kind of stuff. Because she said like, oh, you come here twice a, twice yeah, a year. Yeah. Yeah. If, that's perfect. Yeah. Fine. They're like, that's totally fine. So. I think that's the benefit for Bangkok. So let's talk about Hong Kong. Oh, and again, our... We only visited one. Our relationship is relatively new with Hong Kong. We've never been to Hong Kong boutique ever before. We have no spend. We have no relationship. Um, and we did end up getting a quarter bag and a non-quarter bag. An amazing quarter bag. Like, per- perplexingly amazing quarter bag. Like, why we got five, it? Five, five, five. Yeah, five, five, we can only really speculate. Five, five. The, the customer service was amazing. They ex- far exceeded our expectations here in Hong Kong. Um, I think some of the differences are that they have a style of doing business that is more similar to what we had in Bond Street when we were in London, Bond, right? Yeah. Um, so for example, when you go up, when you roll up to the boutique, you're not assigned an essay. You kind of have to approach an essay. We went in and we kind of like, uh, what do we do? Yeah. Yeah. We walked in and waited for him to assign an essay to us, but then like the people behind us were like, Bow! right? So we're like, okay, we gotta go to, you know. So we went, you gotta grab an essay. You kind of gotta grab an essay and be like, I want to see this, right? Yeah, you, I want to see this, yeah. right? Otherwise, they're just gonna sit there and be like, they're not, they're not gonna approach you. They're not gonna. And, and some people could see that as being rude, but I just, I don't I think, think it's their system. That's just their yeah. system. Yeah. Um, the more important side of it is that they have a not, they, they don't have a quarterback, not, so we asked, like, oh, do you have, what's the quarterback, non quarterback thing? What's the free spend? Do you have a local version? Like and our essay just laughed. He's like, oh. he's like, we don't have any of that. We don't have any of that, right? So I think they really are set up for kind of a transactional, international people coming in, swooping in, and if they seem like they are the right people, uh, in they, this they case, are, yeah. In this case, it happened to be us. I don't know why. <laughs> but they say, and you know, it, it was possible first time, no spend, no history, never been in this store before, to pick up two amazing bags, um, and, and, and really just have an, an amazing experience. Um, I think so. The other ones is that again, the store we went to is the is is a is a legit uh, flagship store, right? Three stories, international people, international city. So it's, it's just, it's it's a flagship store, right? They're, they're servicing an international clientele, whereas Bangkok is servicing, you know, a, a local clientele, regional, a yeah. regional clientele. 
And so I think that they are ready for that and they're also prepared to kind of wheel and deal in the moment, sure. right? If you come in and you develop a good rapport with them and you're spending some Hong Kong dollars, um, then... Which is so confusing. Of course they are uh, totally open to long distance relationships and are they even saying to be okay with the one night stand? I don't know, you know, it's what it seemed like. Um, so, but again, the, the professionalism, the quality, the fact that they, you know, they weren't like, oh, this is the one quarter, no, this is not, this is the one quarterback I get a year, right? They're like, we got quarterbacks. It, yeah. It's almost seemed commonplace for them to have them out there. Yeah. So I think that if you are coming to Hong Kong, go to Landmark Prince and, you know, Try. do the best you can to develop a relationship is in, in the moment. And uh, I think there's a good possibility, very good possibility as you can get a quarterback, again, which is, again, very contrary to what we've had in Topanga or, you know, what we've heard about in Beverly Hills where the people are at five to one, three to one. Uh, for us, we're at very two, close, we're to very close to two to one and almost a year of relationship. And not just buying, you know, the easy stuff. We're buying all the other things that we, we like, like the Cheval d'Orient, the plates, the home goods, the ready to wear, all that's there. But I just think that some of those stores are set up in the U.S. in a way that they just, they just don't get. They just don't have the bags to basically sell, regardless of however you're maneuvering your, your spend. You know. Yeah. Whereas here in Hong Kong, it feels like they're they're ready to go, right? If you if you put in the good faith effort, we'll call it, then they're like, bam, done. Oh, one other thing, interesting. Uh, I guess in comparison is the Lindy thing, right? Um, it seems like Hong Kong is filled with Lindy bags, like just everywhere, just on top of each other. There's so many people with Lindy bags, which we thought was interesting because you don't really see that much back in the U.S. I mean, people have them, but not to the same level or the yeah. same degree. So yeah. I don't know. In the U.S., we have Evelyn's. Yeah, you get them. kind of a lot of Evelyn's. You get some really stew and stuff like that, but uh, here, huge amounts of Lindy's, mainly small ones, but we've I had a couple of larger ones. Uh, no, I haven't seen any Picotins. I haven't seen any In the Loops. Have you seen any In the Loops? I don't think so. No. Yeah, you don't really see a lot. So I think it's either Kelly, Bergen, and Lindy. Wait, yeah. sorry. Lindy is the most. Probably yeah. Like times ten. Yeah. Maybe? So, so maybe the people who would have got the in the loop, people who would have got the Pico Tins, they all just got Lindy's. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. But it's cool because Lindy's a cool bag, and I like it better than Pico Tin for sure. But so I don't know. I don't. Maybe that's a style preference. I do think the bags here are a little bit bigger. Right. Bangkok was really focused on mini bags. Uh, Hong Kong seems to be kind of like the mid range of the small bags. Right. So it's not. Uh, not big, big bags, but not small, small bags, kind of in between there. Um, and I think that makes sense because you see a lot of people actually using their bags for day-to-day -day stuff here, sure. especially those Lindy's. They're using them on the on the metro, on the subway. Yeah. They're going to and from work. Uh, they're not just busting out their mini CBKs to, to, to flex on people at a wedding. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I think that's interesting, and I think that probably leads to a different kind of environment overall for Hermes in general here in Hong Kong. So that's going to be it for our comparison between the different boutiques here in uh, Asia. So that's uh, Bangkok as well as Hong Kong. And we would have liked to go on to more, but <laughs> it just didn't work out. I mean that in the best possible way. Uh, it just didn't really work out. Um, but if you like these videos, if you find them helpful, if you think they're interesting, if you like the Hermes conversation, if you like the Hermes milieu, and if you like the bad candy, we have so much great back candy from here in Hong Kong. Obviously, please don't forget to like and subscribe because it will really help the channel grow. And of course, we are so, so thankful for that. Thank you. But also because it means you get notified when our long videos come out, when our short videos come out, and all the stuff we have on the socials at The Handbag Husband on YouTube and on Instagram. Uh, we got new immense content coming out every single week. So with that, from a very <laughs> weary, uh, a long, <laughs> long, long day, uh, here in Hong Kong from the Handbag Husband. Thank you and goodbye. See you at home. See you at home.